Hello everybody and welcome to the Tommy Sport newsfeed. Today I'm talking about um, the final drive ratio in your RC car. Um, for example, always we have a touring car here on the table, so we mainly focus on that. But the theory of calculating and defining um, gear ratios is normally the same for off-road cars as well. Um, yeah, as you can see, many, many different spur gears are in use and pinion gears as well if you are going on the track and trying to find a good gear ratio for your car. Um, but first of all, I would like to explain you a little bit how you can uh, easily calculate the final drive ratio of your car by yourself. Um, so first of all, it is important to know that every car has its own internal gear ratio before you install a pinion gear and a spur gear. So um, as you know, most of uh, today's uh, touring cars, when you buy them and you build the kit, there is normally never a pinion gear and a spur gear included. This is because um, many different racing classes um, yeah, are needing different sizes of spur gears and pinion gears. And therefore, at one point, the manufacturers decided some years ago, hey, it makes no sense to put any spur gear in, which the drivers maybe will never use. So, therefore, it is um, always important for you when you order a new car kit, think about pinion gear and spur gear because it will not be included in your touring car kit. In the front wheel drive class, it's the same. Um, in the other classes, I'm not sure about it. So, um, but we talked about the internal gear ratio. Um, this is the ratio which defines the internal uh, gearing of your car. And how is it calculated? It is very simple because um, it is a calculation between um, the number of uh, teeth on your pulley, on the, the small um, pulley gear, which you normally then put your spur gear on. Um, it, it is uh, located in the center of your drivetrain. This is the pulley gear. And then you have a gear on the differential and on the spool. And um, nowadays, most of the modern touring cars, they are using an internal gear ratio of 1.9. So it is now very easy how you reach this number because you are counting or you're taking the, the number of uh, teeth from your gear differentials um, gear, which is uh, in this case um, 20, uh, 40, no, 38, sorry, 38 teeth. And you have 20 teeth here on the uh, pulley gear. And now you are doing nothing else than dividing um, the number of uh, 38 through the number of 20. So divide 38 and 20 and you will get to the value of 1.9. This is the internal gear ratio. What means this value? Also not very difficult to explain. It means that um, the pulley gear needs to turn 1.9 times to reach one complete rotation of the pulley or the gear differential in the front and in the rear because they are spinning at the same time. So when the pulley is spinning 1.9 times around, you will have reached one complete um, rotation of the spool or the gear differential. So therefore you need this value of internal uh, gear ratio 1.9. Now uh, you want to know your final drive ratio because when you check the setup sheets or the rules of racing classes, you always read about the FDR, the final drive ratio. This is then when the car is ready to go on the track with pinion gear and spur gear because these two gears are super important now to define the final drive ratio. Um, with the value of 1.9, this is already fixed. And now you have to also divide the number of the spur gear through the number of your pinion gear. So for example, you are using a 94 spur gear and a 47 pinion gear. When you divide these two values, um, you will get to, to the value of 2.0. So this means that the spur gear, no, it means that the pinion gear must spin around two times, two complete rotations of the pinion gear to get one complete rotation of the spur gear. In this case, 94, 47. Perfect example, 2.0. And now you take the value of 
and you multiplicate it with the internal gear ratio of 1.9. And when you multiplicate 2.0 and 1.9, you get to the final drive ratio of 3.8. So this is uh, how the whole thing gets calculated, okay? And it's very important to understand because um, many or some of the manufacturers, they have included um, some charts, some gearing charts in their manuals. So it is easy for you. If you need um, a special gear ratio, just check the overview, the charts, and there you can see which pinion gear or which spur gear you need to combine to finally get to this um, number of uh, the final drive ratio then. But some manufacturers, they don't have this charge, um, these charts, and it is important for yourself that you can calculate your final drive ratio to be sure that you are playing in the rules of the racing series you are attending. Um, nowadays, a lot of racing series, they have um, some uh, maximum gear ratios uh, defined in their rules. This is a good, a good thing in my opinion. And um, it is very important to, to stick to the rules. And um, for example, now for the new ETS season, the stock classes, they will use 3.8 gearing outdoors in the season 23, 24 I'm talking about now. Um, yeah, and therefore, it is important to, to have the correct pinion gear and spur gear to reach to the maximum gear ratio because it is always the driver's goal in the stock classes to be exactly on the limit of the gearing. So when it's 3.8, everybody will try to be on 3.80 because this will mean that you have the, the best top speed on the straightway and uh, that you will not race with any kind of disadvantages uh, over your competitors. Um, in general, um, there's one thing I want to explain because um, when you talk to drivers and about the gearing, you always hear um, that you want to make maybe a longer gearing or shorter gearing. And everybody um, is always talking about uh, going two teeth longer or one teeth shorter. And um, therefore, I just want to, to explain what is about longer and shorter. So when somebody is talking about going longer with the gearing or going higher with the gearing, that means that he will use a bigger pinion gear in the next run. So he will maybe go from 30 to 32 or from 45 to 46 or 47. This means longer gearing. The overall value of your final drive ratio then will go down to a lower number. So when you use a bigger pinion gear, you will not maybe run with 3.8, then your value will go down to 3.7 or 3.6. So the lower the number of your final drive ratio, the longer is the gearing and the faster is your top speed normally. So um, when somebody is talking about going longer, he will increase the size of the pinion gear or he will use a smaller spur gear as well, which is uh, the same in this uh, moment. And um, yeah, other guys, they will maybe say, hey, I will go shorter with the gearing or lower with my gearing. Then they will use um, a bigger spur gear or a smaller pinion gear. Um, and the number of the final drive ratio then will go up to a higher number from 4.5 to 5.0, for example. These are just examples. Um, so this is what is behind higher or lower gearing. And um, this is um, especially important if you are running in an open stock class, for example, or maybe in your club racing series. Wherever there is no maximum final drive ratio in the rules, you can use the gears however you like. And when this is the case, all the drivers, they are aiming for the longest possible gearing because that will mean a good or a very high top speed in the end, which will be an advantage in the stock class on bigger tracks, for example. Um, yeah, and everybody will play around and will test how long the gearing can be to, uh, and, and with not overheating the motor and the speed controller at the same time. Because as longer you are gearing the motor, as higher you gear it up, as more heat you will produce in the speedo and in the motor because um, yeah, it is more stressful than for the motor with the big pinion gear to spin around the, the drivetrain of your car. As smaller the pinion gear is, as more aggressive is your acceleration out of the corners, but you will lose top speed at the same time. Um, but with a small pinion gear, you will not produce a lot of heat because it is a very easy job for the motor to, to spin around quickly and to transfer the rotations into the drivetrain. So um, it is always kind of a compromise in open classes to find the gear ratio where the temperature is in a pretty okay window 
and where your top speed and your acceleration is also well balanced. Sometimes on a small track it might be good to go with a smaller pinion gear to get a more aggressive acceleration out of the corners and where the top speed is maybe not so important because of a short straightaway but when you're racing on a big outdoor track or a big carpet track it might be an um, advantage to have a longer gearing with better top speeds to not lose uh, any, any ground to, to the others on the, on the long straightaway or in long sweepers or wherever you need a higher speed. So this is um, uh, very important to know that you have to, to play around with, with the gearing. Um, last but not least, um, I want to um, talk about modified and about one thing which sometimes the people are misunderstanding. Um, first about modified. Modified is relatively easy concerning the gearing. Um, most of the drivers, they are running 4.5 turn motors, 5.0 uh, or maybe 5.5 indoors. So these three motors are the most used motors in modified touring car and the gearing which the drivers are using is normally between 7.0 and 7.5. In, in this window most of the drivers are playing around going uh, up or down with the pinion gear by maybe one number only. Um, sometimes um, drivers are using a bigger pinion gear when the track is super loose and slippy, slippery and uh, you want to smoothen everything a little bit down, then you go with a bigger pinion to, to just make it a little bit more easy to drive and not so aggressive out of the corners. But in generally, modified drivers, they have their, their gearing, which they are normally always use, um, and then they play with the settings of the speed controller, with the turbo, with the boost, and with the, um, yeah, the power delivery and everything. Um, with the timing on the motor. So this is more important then. And the gearing is staying the same in most of the cases for, for most of the races outdoors or indoors. It's only a small difference then. Um, one thing a lot of drivers are maybe misunderstanding from time to time. I heard some of the discussions in the last years. Um, we talked about a final drive ratio. So when it's 3.8, for example, you can reach this uh, 3.8 with different uh, combinations of pinion and spur gears. So for example, you are using a 90 spur gear and a 45 pinion gear. Then you will be at 3.8 when the internal ratio is 1.9. You will reach the same 3.8 if you are using 94 with a 47 pinion or maybe a 96 spur gear with a 48 pinion. You will always come to the same number of 3.80. And there's absolutely no difference on the track concerning acceleration or top speed if you're using the 90-45 or the 96-48. There's absolutely no difference. Because sometimes I hear people talking about ah, if you're using smaller gears, you will have a better acceleration. If you're using bigger gears overall, your top speed will maybe be better. No, that's not right. The final drive ratio of 3.8 is the same However you reach it, your car will not be faster out of a corner or on a straightaway if you're going with bigger or smaller gears. The final number is what matters because this will define uh, the gear ratio which your car will use. If you're going bigger with spur gear and pinion gear or you go uh, lower with both of these sizes, the, um, the relationship between the spur gear and the pinion is the same. Bigger spur, bigger pinion, smaller spur, smaller pinion. Because you want to reach the number of 3.8 or 4.0. So the only case where you feel a difference when you're going up or down with one of the, of the gears is in these open classes, as we had talked about. But you can definitely not feel a difference when you reach the same final drive ratio with different gears. In theory, for sure, with the smaller gears, you will have a little bit less rotating mass, which the motor has to, to spin around. But to be honest, this is so low that you will never feel it on the track. So don't go crazy in, in your mind when you have to reach a final drive ratio of some number. Um, just take the gears, calculate it, and make sure that you have enough spare gears for the race meeting. And then uh, just switch off your brain and just drive it on the track because a 3.8 or a 4.0 or a 4.5 final drive ratio is always the same no matter how you reach this value. This is my statement concerning uh, final drive ratios in stock classes. Um, yeah, and that was our video for today. 
Um, I hope that you have learned how to calculate your final drive ratio of your RC car. I hope that you maybe learned a little bit about um, the, the process of calculating it, about the internal gear ratio, about the gear charts and your manuals, and about maybe um, gearing uh, stuff in, in open classes. It's all about the temperature, so don't go crazy with the gearing because when the gearing is too high, you will maybe have the problem that your motor will get really, really hot and you will lose some power in the last minutes of the race because of the hot temperature. This will decrease the, the power of the motor then. So always make sure that you are in a good window of acceleration, top speed and temperature in all these open stock classes and in modified as well. Don't go crazy with your speedo settings. Less power is more. And um, so therefore I would say that was the video for today about the gearing. Um, if you like, just comment below the video. Just tell me a little bit about your experiences with uh, gearing and how you deal with uh, this task. And then we will see us in the next Tony Sport Newsfeed video. Until then, always keep in mind, race with Tony Sport. You will never race alone. And please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, make sure that the bell is on and you will never miss a video in the future. Goodbye and have a great day.